In this video, I'm going to go through some of the questions from the textbook in section 2.7, Multiplying and Dividing Rational Expressions. And this one here that I'm going to start with is actually question 1D. Now, anytime we multiply fractions, uh, we want to multiply numerator times numerator and denominator times denominator. But if we are multiplying two rational expressions, we want to look at factoring everything first. So we're going to make sure each piece in the numerator is factored and each piece in the denominator is factored. So in the first rational expression here, I've got x squared in the numerator and the denominator 2x plus 1. Now each of those pieces by themselves is already in factored form. Now we multiply by, and we can take out a common factor here, 3. So 3 and then times 2x plus 1 is what's left over 5x. So we've got each piece now is in factored form. The only piece that we actually had to factor was the numerator of the second rational expression. Okay. So now we multiply numerator times numerator. So 3 times x squared, 3x squared, and then that's multiplied by 2x plus 1. And in the denominator, we've got 5x times 2x plus 1. Okay. And we can simplify here. We know that 2x plus 1 divided by 2x plus 1 is equal to 1. And we know that x squared divided by x is just x. Okay. And what we're left with then is 3x in the numerator times 1, and in the denominator, 5 times 1. Okay. And so this is our simplified form. Now we do have to still make sure to state restrictions anytime we're simplifying rational expressions. Uh, and so from the x here, we've got a restriction that x cannot equal 0. And from this factor here, if we take that to the side for a minute, we've got 2x plus 1 cannot equal 0, uh, which means that x cannot equal negative 1 half. We want to add that to our restrictions as well. All right, here's question 3b again from section 2.7. Uh, now this time we're dividing two rational expressions. And so it's the same rule as when we're dividing fractions. We want to take the reciprocal of the second fraction and then multiply. And so we'll start with that. And at the same time, we'll be sure to factor each piece. So if we factor the numerator in the first rational expression, we get two and then in brackets, x plus five. And the denominator, if we factor that, we get x minus 2 all squared. Okay, and then we're going to multiply by the reciprocal of this rational expression. So we're going to multiply by x minus 2 over, and then we want to factor x squared minus 25, which is a difference of squares and factors as x minus 5 times x plus 5. Okay. And now we can either multiply numerator times numerator and denominator times denominator, or we can see what simplifies first, because we know that these two numerators will multiply together, and we know that these two denominators will multiply together. Okay, so here I can see x plus 5. I'm going to have x plus 5 divided by x plus 5 at some point. And so that is equal to 1. I've also got x minus 2 divided by x minus 2. So it's going to take away one of the factors of x minus 2 in the denominator. And so my simplified form is 2 times 1 times 1. So 2 and over x minus 2. Remember, one of the factors uh, was divided out with the piece in the numerator, uh, and so we don't have to square it anymore. Uh, and then times x minus 5. Okay. And so that's our simplified form. We need to remember to state restrictions, 
And so we know that x cannot equal negative, uh, sorry, positive 2. And x cannot equal positive 5 because neither of these factors can equal 0. Uh, and we need to make sure we consider anything that was once in the denominator. So this factor here, x plus 5, uh, that means that we don't want an x value of negative 5 because that would make the denominator 0. And we have to remember that x minus 2 in the original question was once part of the denominator. And so we want to make sure that we've considered that as a restriction, which we have because we've already stated that x cannot equal positive 2. And so this is our simplified form with our restriction. Okay, this one is number 6D uh, from section 2.7. Uh, again, here we're dividing two rational expressions. So we want to make sure that we're multiplying by the reciprocal of the second rational expression. Uh, so we're going to do that and at the same time factor all of the different pieces. So in the numerator here, we've got a difference of squares. And so that factors to 3y minus 2 times 3y plus 2 okay. over, we can common factor this denominator. We've got 4 times y minus 3. Okay, now here we're going to multiply by the reciprocal. Uh, so I can common factor in the denominator here. Uh, I've got a 6 in common. Uh, and I'm left with 3 minus y. Okay. And here you've actually got a perfect square trinomial. So remember in order to check to see if it's a perfect square trinomial, um, the square root of the first term is 3y. The square root of the last term is 2. Multiply them together, we get 6y, and double it, and we get 12y. So we know that this is a perfect squared trinomial, and it would factor to 3y plus 2, all squared. Okay. And so now we want to see what simplifies. And I've got a 3y plus 2 here. And that's going to simplify with one of the factors of 3y plus 2 here. So 3y plus 2 divided by a 3y plus 2 is equal to 1. Okay. Now I've also got uh, this factor here of 3 minus y and this factor in the denominator of y minus 3. And so we might want to look at taking out a common factor of negative 1 in one of these factors. Uh, so that we can simplify this further. So we'll do that as part of the next step. Okay. So here, now I've got 3y minus 2 over 4 times y minus 3 times, uh, in the denominator, I'm left with one of the factors of 3y plus 2. And in the numerator, I'm going to take out a factor of negative 1. So now I've got negative 6. And then in brackets, I would have negative 3 plus y, which if I reverse those two terms is the same as y minus 3. So now I've got y minus 3 divided by y minus 3, which we know is 1. And I can simplify this further. I get negative 6 times 3y minus 2 over and then 4 times 3y plus 2, which is equal to, I can simplify this, negative 6 over 4 is equal to negative 3 over 2. And I've got this 3y minus 2 over 3y plus 2. Okay, we want to make sure to state any restrictions. And so the restrictions would be, starting at the end here, we've got y cannot equal uh, negative 2 over 3, because that would make this factor equal to 0, uh, and hence the whole denominator equal to 0. Okay? Uh, here I've got that same factor in the denominator. Let's keep going backwards. Uh, I've taken care of this factor, 3y plus 2. I want to uh, look at what the restriction is for y minus 3. So I know y cannot equal positive 3. Okay. Uh, keep going back. I also know that 
3 minus y. Originally, that was a factor in the denominator because remember, we had to take the reciprocal. And so 3 minus y was once in the denominator. Uh, but I've already taken care of that restriction as well because that would be, uh, we can't have y is equal to 3 because that would make this factor 0. And hence, that original denominator would be 0 if y was equal to 3. And so we've taken care of all of our restrictions. So again, there's our simplified form and the restrictions that go with that.